The more I learn about life, the more I understand how much it's about unlearning stuff. And through that, I get wiser and I get experience and I truly start to see what matters, what works and what is even beneficial for a good life. And I think a lot of people struggle with this at the moment because the whole systematic approach our society has had to program and uh, educate people, it's, it's kind of crumbling down. And what we need now is critical thinking and the courage to really start to question things and be like, do I really want this or do I think that I want this because someone once told me that I should want this. And these realizations can be really powerful and the more you do internal work and the more you start to find who you actually are and, and a lot of the times you go back to your childhood and you start remembering oh, what was I like and for me it has been a really kind of long process and a, a interesting journey inside of myself the last I don't know five years and at the moment I feel I've come to some kind of closure. I've started to realize that I don't need to be anyone for anyone. I don't need to be a certain way or a specific person because someone else wants it. And it's a bit of a personal thing and I don't want to share too much about it, but once you detach from your surroundings and, and your close people or anyone who's been influencing you, it doesn't have to be family, it doesn't have to be someone close, it can even be someone you admire, you're a fan or something and then suddenly you realize that wow those values and, and that type of living or thinking isn't even what I want. And it takes so much courage to start choosing yourself because that's what it's about. It's about daring to actually trust yourself, to listen to yourself and to be like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to represent. This is my identity. Because like almost all of us have been given an identity. It's like you go to school, you become this teacher or you become this plumber or you become this coach. And that's the story you tell yourself. It's like, okay, because I'm, I'm this coach, so I need to be like this or I'm this actor. I need to do certain things. But in reality, we don't need to do anything except the things that we want. And it has to do with regaining your own power. And for someone who didn't have his own power, naturally his own life, me, it, it feels like total freedom when you realize that, oh, I can actually do whatever I want and of course there's like ethics and there's morality and, and all these things and, and why would I even want to do anything harmful or, or like negative on purpose? But once I started to realize that in my internal world and my worldviews and my values, those are all things that I can choose. And it's not so easy to choose because 
we've been told all our life and especially people who, who work a job and, and they're so used to being told what to do. It's confusing when you suddenly have all the cards in your own hands and you're like, oh, how am I supposed to, to play this game again? And the only advice I have for this and, and what I'm also like applying for myself is to start small because if you think you start a new hobby or something, you can't go into that hobby like comparing yourself to the pros and be like, yeah, I'm going to be that in a week. And when we see powerful people and we see people who have taken control of their life, they take responsibility of themselves and they, they kind of get out of this victim mentality completely. And, and that's usually when people start to thrive. That's when people start to reach their goals, reach their dreams and, and kind of live this dream life that we all so much want. We, we have these visions in our head of our dreams because of reason. It's like the dream is there because it is attainable. We wouldn't have a, an idea in our head that would be impossible because why would that serve us? So once we realize that all the dreams and all the visions we have for ourselves and for our lives, whatever it may be, they are attainable because we can already see them. What you can see, you can make real. And this is like all the ancient wise people and, and even like modern scientists have proven this, that like if, if you can see something, that's like the first step of reality. It's like um, if we think of it like we live in this three-dimensional world and uh, like... This is a, a three-dimensional object. But before this was a three-dimensional object, it was someone's imagination. Like this logo didn't appear randomly. It was someone had a vision in their head and they started to take action on that vision and that vision manifested into a three-dimensional object. So once we realize this, that, that the, the most powerful thing that we have as humans is our imagination and we can create things in our imagination. And I believe there's a reason why it isn't like in mass media and, and just this uh, common education that we can do this because the world would be a totally different place and and there wouldn't be these giant factories and and uh, like suppressed people to to have them only as like workforce because when people start to realize that they have the power and that their own imagination is one of the biggest tools they have that's the reason why we can set goals. That's the reason why we can have schedule. That's the reason why we can drive a car and anticipate what the next move will be. That's why like most other uh, animals can do this. Or how, what do I know? But that, that's like the, the common scientific explanation that humans have this ability to kind of you can think about the past and you can think about the future and when you think about the future it's always your imagination whether you like it or not because reality is that there is nothing else than this moment like this right here and now it's this 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 when you realize that the only thing that can create anything is this moment and what you choose to do in this moment is what will determine the moments of the future. Okay? So your imagination is the key. That's the first step to 
anything you desire. And, and this is what I say by unlearning, because we are being told that you need to find the goals, the, all the tools, all, everything on the, in the external. And the external, for sure, it plays a role. And, and, and we as humans, we can communicate with each other. But if we don't use our own imagination to start creating things, that's when we fall into the victim mode of creating for someone else. And that's what people have been doing. And it's been exploited for centuries, even like the slaves and everything. That was some guy's imagination that they started thinking, oh, how can we get this manpower? How can we get more for ourselves? And that was by using other people because they stripped the the will and everything from the other people and, and they used their power to gain from the self. So at the moment we live in a world where there's AI and there's so many automations. So we don't actually like, we don't need this modern slavery anymore and it's all about kind of starting to release all these people and uh, that's an, a common narrative at the moment that we have this there's so many jobs that we're gonna lose and then people are gonna be jobless and I think wow what a great thing like people will be free there's gonna be some robots doing the job for us. Isn't that great? And if people start to think like this and they're like, wow, that's exciting. What should we do? Because it, it is like that. Once you unlearn that you need to, to have a job uh, or that you need to work for someone else, you can start thinking like, oh, but what would I want to do? Maybe you want to have a, a small, like homegrown, you, you want to start to grow vegetables or you want to start growing fruits or something that you can support your own community with. Or you, you want to start creating art or something. And there's always going to be like value exchange in some form. And like, I don't know everything and I, I don't certainly know how this whole money thing and the economy is going to transition. But one thing I truly believe in is that we're going away from that, like, factory slavery because there's no point. And, and once it becomes mainstream that energy is unlimited, that's that's kind of the the whole collapse of the economic system and we have to remember that we are humans we have the ability to think and solve problems so it's just gonna be another problem on the way to a better future and some people say that it has to go down like in some horrific ways and there needs to be a lot of struggles and stuff like that I don't know. I like to think that we as humans are evolved enough to kind of come up with solutions that are non-hostile and uh, that will benefit us as people. And we will kind of come into this united thing of like, yeah, sure. Like everyone wants to do something because that's, I know from experience, if, if, if you just sit around and you watch Netflix or you do something, you just spend your time, it gets boring really fast. And that's when you want to do something because let's say you, you grow your own vegetables. That's like so amazing. You get like kicks out of it because you see them grow and you're like, okay, how can I make this better? And, and that's when we get back to this excitement of doing stuff so working because you think that you need to work and that you 
think that you need to kind of just like hustle and grind to get somewhere. It's an illusion. And this illusion is starting to just fade away. And so many people, especially people who have like enough money that they could actually survive for their rest of their life, like in, in terms of eating and stuff like that, they could just start to calm down. But the problem there is that they still think, and a lot of them are still running after the next big thing. They think, yeah, but I want more money. I want more leverage. I want more, 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 more. And that's fine. Like if, if that's the life you want to live, but if you're unhappy doing that, I don't see the point in continuing. And I think it's much better to stop and be like, okay, what do I actually want to do? Do I actually want to go to that office? Do I actually want to work with these people? And uh, what would my kids want? What, what would my kids be proud of in 30 years if I did something? And these longer term questions, these kind of broad view questions are the ones that are going to give the good answers because if you think about something that you do today and you're like yeah but, but i really need to to go to this job that i hate because i need this one apartment that i actually don't like and i would just want to live in the woods and and have this small organic farm and and whatever but I can't do it because I need to stay here or there because of this belief. And then when you're like, okay, but in 10 years, I'm going to be living there in the woods and stuff. What if you just do the change now? And you're like, this current situation doesn't serve me. And I'm just going to be like, oh, let's unlearn all these beliefs and uh, limits that are inside of my head towards my goals and just do it. And, and I want to be an advocate and a, a kind of a role model of how you can live. You can go out of the norm. You can go out of the system in, in a sense of how you're supposed to work. Like I don't work too many hours a day. I don't make too much money, but as long as I survive, and, and that's something that I've started to trust the universe, that you will always have enough because there has always been enough. I'm still alive. I've, I still, I've always managed out of every situation. So why wouldn't I trust that I would manage out of all the future situations too? So this trust, I think it's needed to get the courage to kind of jump off that safety wagon that the whole society and our parents and everyone has built around us because it's taught that you need to be in this thing that is safe because it's logical and the logic mind only knows what's happened in the past. So the logic mind only works from the past and this is why i think unlearning is so important because you need to learn how to unlearn your logical mind and start to be like oh imagination oh feeling oh what could it be and daydreaming all these amazing tools that we have but we're taught as kids that yeah, 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 you could stop that now because now you need to go into the real world and, and do some work. And the real world is like the biggest illusion, the, this like job world. It's like, no, we're supposed to stay like child-minded and play and have fun and, and go out and do things that excites us because that's what life is about, especially now because we're not in the survival mode anymore. There's like more buildings than people. There's so many empty buildings. There's so much food that gets thrown away. 
and the reason is because of business and because of like yeah we need to make money but if it's not profitable let's just destroy it and that's like the most insane thing ever and and that's the whole dark side of of our whole thing but the point of this video was just to to share with you that unlearn stuff and uh yeah that's that's the most important thing my name is Mitz. please subscribe to my channel if you like this video if you need help check i have a resource of uh, changing limiting beliefs in the description and uh, i'll see you in a future video peace out